Or are you feeling like you might have hypoglycemia or low blood sugar? My name is Dr. Terry Nella, and in this video, we're going to look at some of the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia and reactive hypoglycemia. In this video, we'll look at some of the blood glucose parameters that are typical with hypoglycemia and maybe some atypical presentations as well, and other things related to hypoglycemia. Again, as I said, my name is Dr. Tara Nellen. If you're new to this channel, I just want you to know, I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test symptom, diagnosis, or just trying to get better understanding of your health. I make these videos to help you with that. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormones, and overall optimization, click on the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is also known as low blood sugar and can present with a variety of different signs and symptoms. And this is in part why I wanted to cover this topic in a little more detail. It can vary in intensity as well. And with high blood sugar being so prevalent amongst the population, that typically means low blood sugar is as well. And that may not be immediately intuitive, but let me explain why that's the case. When we have high blood sugar, our pancreas can actually sense this and it triggers insulin production to occur, and it will sometimes overproduce that insulin. Now, insulin's job is to take the glucose that's floating around in the blood and put it into cells as quickly as possible so as not to damage the tissues in our bodies. So too much insulin can trigger a low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. And this is called reactive hypoglycemia in some instances. So what are the symptoms of low blood sugar or hypoglycemia? Well, things like shakiness and tremors, trembling hands, even quivering voice, sweating, and heat sensations throughout the body, whether you're sleeping or whether it's you're just up and about, can definitely all be signs of hypoglycemia. Now, usually you're going to have multiple of these symptoms going on at the same time. As far as the sweating and heat sensations, it could be a profuse sweating coming down or it could just be cold and clammy feeling after the heat sensation. It can even be a transient hot flash. So women that are going through menopause often have hot flashes and that's more associated with hormones, but they have blood sugar issues that they're going to be more susceptible to that as well. Sometimes with the low blood sugar, you're also going to have heart palpitations or feeling of your heart beating in your chest or even a flutter type of sensation in your chest. Intense hunger or feeling like you need to eat something can also come about. Cravings for sugary foods is also common, but it doesn't need to be present in order for your symptoms to actually be from hypoglycemia. We've certainly all heard of the issue of being hangry, being hungry and angry at the same time, or irritability, sudden mood changes, and nervousness or anxiety, or even panicky suddenly out of nowhere. That could be from not eating enough or getting hypoglycemic. Either it's a reactive hypoglycemia or your just blood sugar is too low. Sometimes with that, when you're feeling irritable, angry, and hungry, there may be difficulty concentrating. So you're so hungry, you're not sure what to eat. And there can be kind of a difficulty with making decisions in that time frame. Sometimes there's weakness as well, fatigue, and even feeling lightheaded or dizziness with this. It's not uncommon in really severe cases for people to feel like they need to lay down because they're getting dizzy. Nausea is really common. Having some aversion to food because you're so nauseous and hypoglycemic that you don't want to eat, even though you know you should. So the more severe the hypoglycemia, the more prominent some of these symptoms are going to be and the more severe the symptoms are going to be. 
And also, of course, the more hypoglycemic you are, the more of the overall symptom list you're going to present with. In the same way, not everyone's going to present with the same amount of severity and intensity, but having any of these symptoms should make you at least consider the fact that it could be from blood sugar or hypoglycemia. And while the low blood sugar may not linger that long, the actual low blood sugar in your blood, the symptoms can actually linger for hours. So how do you know if you have this and what are some of the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia? So most would define hypoglycemia as a blood sugar level that is 70 milligrams per deciliter or less. While this is a standard, it is possible to have these symptoms and problems with a higher blood sugar. Usually when this occurs, it's because your body is running at a higher blood sugar most of the day. And when it drops below that level, you start to feel off, maybe shaky or heat sensations or some of these other symptoms. One thing I want to emphasize and for you to understand is that when we do blood tests for blood sugar, usually there's a very narrow window that we're looking at like 10 to 12 hours and in a fasting state. Many people never fast this long throughout their day, except for when they're doing a blood draw. So you might, you know, go eight hours of sleep within an hour or so eating breakfast, Maybe you have a snack, maybe you don't have a snack, but within four hours you're eating again, another four hours you're eating again. So fasting for 10 to 12 hours, you're probably looking at the absolute best numbers that you're going to have as far as your blood sugar. Even if you do fast, you're not always capturing the blood sugar in the fed state in the multiple hours that follow the eating time. So this leads me to the next question, which is, how do you actually test for hypoglycemia and reactive hypoglycemia? That's what we're going to look at in the next video, testing for reactive hypoglycemia. So how do I do that help you better understand some of the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia? Hopefully it does. If you do have questions or comments on this topic, drop it in the comment section. Happy to answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.